right, Dave, thank you, and we congratulate Coach Izzo on win number 100 here, the first big game in the SEC this season, and Auburn leading at home by two over Kentucky. We're almost at the midway point of the first half. Black shot inside again. Marvin Stone got that one. Yes, Kentucky, another chance to tie it up. They've had back-to-back -back turnovers. And Hurd goes off the miss. Sharp. He's going to lob it up for Njai. No, he's going to back it out of there. Auburn took the early lead. They led by as many as five behind Chris Porter and Damian Fishback. Neither on the floor right now. Both getting a breather. 10-30 remaining in the first half. Both teams utilizing their bench. This crowd has been electric, especially early with Porter playing well out of the interior. Eight on the shot clock. Bird packs it back inside. Another turnover. That's Auburn's fourth. Bird hasn't had the kind of season he had last year. He was excellent from the three-point line. Stone drives inside with a finger roll, partially blocked by Njai. Njai really one of the great shot blockers in America. He's hurt. He's flipping up the floor. And the MCI speaks five languages, has really improved as a player. He's speaking grimace right now. <laughs> <that is. laughs> I wish I could speak English. <laughs> Auburn's been scoreless for the last four minutes. And a blocking foul on the baseline on Kamara. Well, you know, Kentucky's done a great job defensively in their six-game winning streak against Vanderbilt. They shut them out for a long period of time, and they have really lived off their defense. We have said if you rebound and you defend, you always have a chance to win, and they have been doing that. No doubt about that. Brewer and Sharp in the backcourt, even though you can't tell it right now with the way the lineup is. Fishback and Porter and Njai, the five on the floor for Robert. Here's Fishback. He was hot early from three, and he's still in. Okay, and Damian shoot the rock. He's a trifecta man. Three out of four outside the arc and the lead's back to five. That match matches the biggest advantage of the night. And that gives you a nice dimension when you got him shooting the three and quarter on the inside. Ducky almost turned it over again. Again, J.P. Blevins. Todd Tackett playing the backcourt for Kentucky. Stone squares from 15 and it rim out. The rebound comes off to Auburn. Jameson Brewer. I tell you, he's been a big plus. He gained his eligibility in his second semester. Got cleared by the clearing house. Provides excellent quickness. He's the future point guard in this program. He's the guy in the backcourt that came in in game six. Hamilton, the guy that came in in the frontcourt in game six. They had neither of those players in their only loss of the season to Stanford. And that gives you a little bit more depth, a little bit more versatility. Here's penetration by Sharp trying to leave it for Fishback. Double pump on the baseline. And he's going to get his own rebound. Lost it out of bounds. It's going to be Kentucky ball. So Auburn has won 24 straight games here at Bird Eves Memorial Coliseum. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale, we're happy to have you with us. 10,500 on hand. The last team to win here was Kentucky, and Kentucky's had their number. Well, Kentucky last year, they were 17 and 0. Auburn jumped out at everybody, and they lost to Kentucky. Only lost four games all last year. Two to Kentucky, one to Nolan Richardson in Arkansas, and one in the NCAA tournament to Ohio State. So that tells you maybe the psych job that Kentucky has over Auburn, but it doesn't seem to be bothering them here with 820 remaining in the first half. The Tigers lead by five. Smith being chased by Pullman all over the court, and he threw it away almost. Bogans picks up the loose ball. Bogans played really well early in this game. Knocked down the three, made a good cut and drive to the basket. Going to try to get a 15-footer here. Came up a little bit short. Had to take it with six on the shot clock. Bogans has really been a pleasant surprise since inserting this starting lineup. As you look at Njai really near and goodness of the pain. They need his presence inside. Yeah, he's an intimidator. He's an enforcer. Seven-footer on the interior, block shots. Cliff Ellis, what a job he's done. His sixth season now here, 109 wins, 60 losses. 0-8 against Kentucky, though, and that's something he'd like to get over tonight. He said, please don't show that. I mean, <laughs> everywhere he's been, he's been a winner. South Alabama has won the records. Did a great job at Clemson. Coach of the Year in three major conferences, Sun Belt, ACC, and the SEC as a National Coach of the Year last season. A traveling violation on Charles Smith. He won every award last year. You named it, he won it. The John Wooden Awards, Sporting News, USBWA, yes, Basketball News, Sports Illustrated, AP. Auburn by five, 7.48 to play first half here at Auburn. This quick, effective workout is brought to you by Bowflex. It's called strength training, and it's 
the best way to get into the kind of shape that you want to be in. Because getting in shape takes strength, and strength is real. Strength is earned. Strength is built with every move in motion. And with the Bowflex Power Pro, you can get the strength and shape your body, all in the convenience of your home. You know you've always wanted one. And now's the time to call and get your Power Pro with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Did you get your workout today? For a free video and brochure, call right now. Bowflex Fitness. The choice for fitness at home. A bear fell down the hill. What will I do? Mom, what's this word? Sounds it out. Mountain. That's right. At last, the bear made it to the top. You just read that whole book. Let's celebrate. Okay. All right. Here you are. Thank you. Happy meal. Happy meal, please. Nobody packs your lunch like Mamadou. The problem for Auburn right now, Mamadou Njai is injired. As you take a look at him down, battling low, he gets rolled up. It appears on his ankle or his left knee gave out as he went down, tangled up with Marvin Stone. And the very next trip down court, you can see he pulls up. And they are working, it appears, on his left knee on the Auburn sideline. But that would be a huge loss to this team if he can't play the rest of the night. A major loss, but really now the luxury of having David Hamilton coming back the second semester after that broken leg last year gives him a power inside player. This cuts into their depth, and they do play 10 guys. Nobody plays more than 28 and a half minutes. They have 10 players who average roughly five points to around 13 points, so they do have some depth. You got to really have balance to really distribute the ball. Very unselfish team. They lead by five. This place will come to life if they hit on this trip to get their biggest lead. Pick back on a cross-court pass, lost it. Bowman had too much on it, and Auburn turns it over. You know, Fishback wants to have a big game as well. He was Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. And here's the game summary so far. Auburn shooting 47%. Kentucky was strong early. It's really cooled off. They're looking for some offense this trip down with seven minutes remaining in the half. They got Porter right now checking on the wall. And Doc Robinson with a steal. Going to try to take it all away against Dallas. And his leg gave out. He still got the lay. What an outstanding play to protect the basketball. To make that play after coming up a little injured. Up seven. Biggest advantage of the night by the Tigers. And the Tigers want to send a statement out as well. A statement that they can beat a legitimate big-time team. They have not got a win this year over a nationally rated team. Kentucky's gone about six minutes without scoring. I know the Bellas would say, he said, wait a minute, statement. We've been giving one for 15 months. <laughs> <laughs> right. Charles Smith tries to quiet the crowd and won't. Not with that shot. It was a steal by Doc Robinson. Yeah, he steps right into passing lane, good deflection, and now he's got a lot of poise, this kid. Here he's going to try. He pulls up, but he keeps his balance, and there he is utilizing a little power move, lays it on the glass, and gets the conversion. Robinson's got four. Pitch back nine, quarter six. Hamilton a deuce. Here's Bogans outside short, got his own rebound, followed it well. Just threw it up there, hoping to draw a foul and didn't. And now Kentucky picks up a foul instead. They didn't need that. It's on McGlure. That's his second. There's a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion on that floor. But there's a guy with a lot of poise, a big-time winner. They're having a tough time getting the ball inside the McGlure tonight. McGlure has had five double-doubles in the last seven games, and he has not been able to get involved at all so far. First player in Kentucky since 1990 to have three consecutive double-doubles. Reggie Hansen with it way back when. I knew you were going to come up with that. You got all the tickets. Here's Porter. That's his game. See, that's where his game belongs. Medium range. He doesn't have to go out to the perimeter. Maybe at the next level, but he'll make some team. Believe me, in the NBA, he's so strong physically. He can really get up. McGlore, and he went over the attempted shot block of Porter. Good shot by Jamal McGlore. He's got four. 
got so much more confidence now with his ability inside to score. He's always been a defensive player. Back it inside of Hamilton, back out to Robinson. He works for what he thinks is a better shot, and he's right. Good inside, outside play. Hamilton kicks it back out. Doc Robinson, one of those players that makes big plays. Oh, is this play something? Little over five to go in the half. The lead is nine. McGraw, blocked by the corner. That's goaltender. Let's go. We got to count that one. Four, eight, two. That shows you how high he can get up, though. <laughs> yeah, really great jump for a high rise, but really didn't have to make that play. We'll see right here, but has a chance to go in. Oh, wow, that's giving him two. That's just giving him two. You talk about a high riser. We had a kid last night, Ivan Wagner, from out of Texas. Uh -huh. He won the NCAA championship in a high jump. What'd you tell seven me, seven, foot, six? <laughs> six inches, he can jump over Mr. Mr. Miz. <laughs> that's unbelievable. We're under five. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale and our ESPN crew at Birdie's Memorial Coliseum. Auburn, Alabama sold out. Couldn't get a ticket for this one for since last year. Coleman. And he got a three. The little guy. Looks like a little boy, Scott. Scott Coleman to shoot the rock, baby. The lead is 10. This Auburn team wants to send a message. We are one of the top five in America. Auburn four out of seven outside the arc. Only all they have is the Stanford with a play down in California. Inside, Stone made a tough catch, blocked by Hamilton. He got it back and laid it in. Nice play by Marvin Stone to keep his boy. I like David Hamilton. I'll tell you, he gives him a physical presence. He's a six foot nine bundle of muscle. Ooh, he's strong. Here's a lob for Porter. Oh, oh, up the way. Jam City, Dipsy Doof off the road. They're going to Cliff Dwellers. Tommy Smith wants to talk about it. Whoa. Porter's five for five, and that one made the crowd come alive. 30, 20, Auburn. He can energize the crowd, Woo, Brad. He can energize the crowd. You can see that one coming. We were directly behind the pass. There was never a chance for Kentucky as we get another look. There's the diagonal look by Doc Robinson. Perfect. Here's the jam. Great execution. Very simple, but really great execution. Excellent timing. The fifth assist by Doc Robinson, and we're right behind that, Dick and I, and we saw that one coming a mile away. I bet he's just well as behind us and driving us bananas. <laughs> I had a great time today. I signed my book for over 400, and they were all out. And the one thing they were asking, which really was disturbing the way, they said, can we beat Kentucky? And I said, wait a minute, you're top five in the nation. You should be asking that at home. I thought you were going to say, is Brad like that all the time? <laughs> I thought that was going to be the question. That's the one I get asked all the time. College Hoops coming up tomorrow. On ESPN, join us for doubleheader of the ACC at 7. Georgia Tech takes on number 7, Duke, at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And at 9, 14th ranked North Carolina battles Wake Forest. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. Those are a couple of good ones. A couple of good freshmen in that game, too. Jason Williams and Joseph Forte will be showing their wares. Hey, what about Duke? What about the recovery day? I guess. They lose their first two games. They rip 11 in a row. They win two on a row. Chris Carrowell playing like a superstar. Mike Krzyzewski, what a job he does, Brad. You and I said on one of those losses early in the season, get them now. Get them while they're cold because they're going to get hotter, and they are right now. So this Auburn team, 30 to 20. They lead by 10. I'll tell you, foot basketball fever has really caught on down here in football country. You're not kidding. We're in the shadows of... Jordan Hare Stadium at Birdies Memorial Coliseum. And I mean that sincerely. When the sun's shining right, there's a big shadow on this place from the football stadium next door. But it is basketball tonight with 4.03 remaining in the half. Fifth ranked Auburn leads number 23, Kentucky by 10. Chris Porter hasn't missed. I think Chris Porter playing like an All American tonight. He's really a major factor defensively and also offensively. We got all the coaches in the house tonight. Yeah, we got about 15 here. or 20 scouts. Everybody's here. Sonny Smith, Wim Sanderson, David Hobbs, they're all in the house tonight. A whole bunch of NBA scouts sitting down to our right in a five-second call against Kentucky. You don't see that call enough. I see a lot of guys pounding the ball to the deck, and officials let them get away with it. Three minutes, 51 seconds remaining to play in the first half. And 3.51 remaining. Timeout. Still Auburn leading Kentucky by 10. Hey, which side of this are you supposed to use?
www.lutinehealth.com. We're here to help. A significant discovery in eye health may be lutein, a nutrient found in these healthy foods, perhaps as vital to your eyes as the beta carotene in carrots. And now, Centrum and Centrum Silver are the only leading multivitamins that have lutein. So whatever your age, you can help maintain your precious sight. Look into Centrum and Centrum Silver, now more complete with lutein. Also look for Centrum Herbals, the only herbals backed by Centrum Science. FogDog.com, your anytime, anywhere sports store. FogDog. Dick, we knew Chris Porter was up for this game. Boy, is he ever I thought you could see that he was ready to play. There he is inside with a little post move using his strength. Now here he is working the offensive glass, which he does so well. And now he shows the ability to run the court in transition. There he is in transition, getting the deuce. And then here's the high rise of the elevator man with Jam City. Kentucky having won 14 straight in this series, and I don't think Auburn is intimidated at all. We were talking to the kids before the game about that. Doesn't seem to be a problem. Right now, it's one big juicy Porter House in this place. <laughs> I like that, a Porter House, but I stay away from red meat. <laughs> I just want the salmon, and you gave mine away to the clip blowers. I did. I gave away your food oh, right no. before the game. They brought me a big dish here. Those guys didn't even send the plate back. Here's a feed inside of Coleman. Had it blocked by Kamara. And Kamara got another one. I tell you, Jules Kamara gives him that special dimension, shot blocking ability. Now Blevins. They're going to give Blevins some shots. Both of really played him tough, but Blevins can shoot the ball. Cone squares up. Overshot it. Porter, another rebound. Porter wants to be the man tonight. He wants to be the man. The starting lineup for Auburn in there, except Hamilton in for Mamadou Njai. And Njai, they say it's his left hip, and he is okay and may be back. Coleman for three. And the tip, second time ago. They are really climbing the glass. Nobody's blocking out. They're getting the way into the basket. Cliff Ellis, there's some emotion on that sideline. Oh, great defensive play by Chris Porter Black. Great denial in the post. Here's Doc Robinson all the way against Saul Smith, and he got it, and he drew a foul. That was a big-time play right there. You talk about a playmaker, a creator. Doc Robinson, he's got tubby stung. He said Doc Robinson's game was penetration. He took that one all the way in on Saul Smith, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Showed some good body strength as well as he attacked the basket. Now take a look right here. There's the explosion, his ability to protect the basketball, seal the defender. Missed his only two free throws tonight, and he missed that one as well. So there goes the three-point play chance. Kentucky needs a little spark right now. they got to go in with a little bit of momentum, or this team get really away. They're down 14 with under two and a half to go in the half. And one thing about a Tubby Smith team or a Kentucky basketball team, they will battle back in that second half. Prince off balance, he drew a foul. When you think about where Kentucky was, they were four and four, really struggling. They blow out Louisville, win that by 30, and then come up with a stretch of winning six in a row. Tubby Smith's got them really back in the top 20 in America. Deshaun Prince is the line for the Wildcats. Two shots. Deshaun Prince is the free throw line. And he drills it. Prince shooting 71% from the strike so far this year. He had another kick out of Compton, also went to the SEC. The Vanderbilt is Sean Moore. The transfer is now Fresno State. And he had a huge win a week ago tonight over Florida. Yeah. And Kentucky handled him easily, 72-52 at Rupp. Beat him easily and really controlled Dan Lange, who's really an unsung hero, an outstanding player at 31 against Florida. 34-22 as we approach two minutes. Auburn really has met the challenge yes, of Kentucky have. here tonight. No doubt about it. Porter hasn't missed. That time he did. Got a little fancy there. Tried to get five instead of two. Blevins wanted to pull up for a three and instead had to go inside to Allison. He made a tough catch and had it partially blocked by Coleman of all people. 
Hurd coming the other way. We're under two minutes. We're going to get Hurd to get back that jump shot. He's capable of knocking that wing jump shot. Coleman is free momentarily. Didn't get it to him quick enough, and he walked with it. Yeah, he lifted his foot in the foot. Ted Hellery with the ball. He had the game last night as well. He had Connecticut and Texas. And Coleman may have walked on the offensive end, but how about on his defensive end? Take a look at this. From behind against Desmond Allison, a clean block. Oh, he's jumping like you. <laughs> a Georgia Peach, baby. <laughs> Levins, Prince, Allison, Stone, and Kamara on the floor for Kentucky. That's not much of their starting lineup. He's got to be a little quicker with his move, Stone. A little quicker. Hook shot rattled out. Kamara, though, has got the stick down. Kamara really gives him positive minutes in the last few games. We saw him have a great night against Georgia Tech. He had 15 points and five rebounds off the bench. He was one of our players of the game. You talked to him after the game. Yeah, he really came off the bench and gave him a big-time performance. That was a close game against Georgia Tech. Lead's been cut to 10. Robinson's wide open. I like this kid. This kid is a solid point guard, one of the premier point guards in the South. We're under a minute, and it's Auburn by a dozen. Tomorrow guarded by Porter. Leaves it for Stone. Stone lost the handle. Allison tried to save it, and did he? Yes, he did. He got it. Thrown off Robinson's leg. I think Marvin Stone is trying too hard. I, I think too. he's trying to play for bragging rights here. He's from Alabama, and he's really, really trained so hard that he's one step ahead in terms of making a play that could really be effective. He's out of Huntsville, and he chose Kentucky over Alabama and Auburn. As Dick said, he's not playing as solid a game as we see him play earlier in the year. Allison inside. And that got the roll. And a pile up between Prince and Hamilton. Both trying to go for the offensive rebound if there was going to be one, which there wasn't. Allison with four. I look at that athletic ability of Allison. He's a great football player. And I just expect him to break out and be a star. He's got that kind of body and that kind of explosiveness. Courtyard by Marriott. Halftime report coming up in about eight seconds with Chris and Digger. And a five-second call, the second time we've seen it called tonight. By the same official, Shouse yep. has called it twice. And you know what? He's making a legit call. Courtyard by Marriott. Halftime report. The aforementioned and a great look back at that Big Ten battle. Michigan State and Indiana. Syracuse continues to roll along. Chris and Digger will be here. They'll roll along in about five seconds. I'll tell you, Syracuse, the only unblemished team in America, really has a legitimate starting five. Yesterday, Jim Calhoun was really singing the praises of the Syracuse Orange. But I don't know if he was setting them up and getting his kids pumped up right. for it. I think it's in about 10 well, days they play them. Syracuse won a couple now that hasn't been, in your words, Cupcake City. So maybe they are good. <laughs> Last four seconds. Blevins going to try to work for a jumper. Got it off and got it. J.P. Blevins, a little momentum. Just inside the three-point line. But Kentucky will take anything they can get at this stage. Because they've been outplayed by fifth-ranked Auburn and Chris Porter, who has led the way with 12 points and four rebounds. It's Auburn, 36, Kentucky, 28. Courtyard by Marriott halftime report with Chris and Digger coming up, guys. All right, Brad, Dick, thank you. The Tigers may have played the 156th schedule in the country, maybe 0-1 against ranked teams, but at least in the first half so far, making believers of a lot of folks, including you, who thought Kentucky might get it. Yeah, I really did. I'll tell you why. <laughs> they're offensive rebounding Auburn. They're averaging about 18 a game this season. They averaged 19 a game last season. So that hasn't changed, and that creates to the other things that happen with their quickness. They're that quick at both ends of the floor. Of course, we talked about Porter rising to the occasion so far in the first half. Coming up in our courtyard by Marriott Hapton on the Port will take you to East Dancing. Some storylines on it. Izzo going for a landmark. Mateen Cleaves making his return against the Hoosiers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Daytech Online. The rules of online trading are changing. I know the truth about tires. And I have proof. Pep Boys has tires from four for $99 to the Futura SE's motor trends that were impressive. Get the tape. The truth will set me free. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. I'm not doing anything tonight, so... Call me. In love with you. Say you love me. Oh, hey, Romeo. Grabbing by Mike. Boys, this is my lucky time. Ah! Ah! What is this, a five or a six? With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. A five or a six! Make it a Bud Light. That's a four. That's definitely a B. Four. Four. Maybe an F. I know that look. 
You're trying to decide which DVD player you should buy, aren't you? Based on your existing home theater system, be sure to get something with Dolby Digital Decoding. If learning about DVD players were this easy, you wouldn't need a place like 800.com. But it isn't, so you do. Call me. I'll help you set it up. 800.com. Everything you always want. Electronic store and more. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. I know the truth about tires. And I have proof. Pep Boys has tires from four for $99 to the Futura SE's motor trend said were impressive. Get the tape. The truth will set me free. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. This halftime report is presented by Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers. Sneak preview there of the classic Indiana-Michigan State game. Welcome back to our Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Lots of reasons to watch Indiana-Michigan State. Number one, it's a good game. Number two, for Tom Izzo going for a career win number 100, which 100. You, you don't remember yeah. years. Yeah. Mateen yeah. Cleaves trying to break Scott Skiles' school assist record and also his first game back as a starter in front of the home crowd since the injury layoff. It was a good one. We pick it up in the second half. Indiana really led throughout much of this game here. A.J. Guyton knocks down the triple. Hoosiers by three inside of four minutes to play. Biggest shot of the game, Morris Peterson. 14 seconds to go, knocks down the three-pointer to tie the game. After an Indiana turnover by Guyton for the win. Cleaves. From, you know he practices that shot yeah. in practice four or five times at the end of it. Doesn't quite get it to go. We go to overtime. Indiana. Cleaves, unbelievable shot to the basket. Everybody thought he got fouled. Great basket for Michigan State. Izzo shedding tears for win number Why? 100. It's a big one. But still. Yeah, he beats Knight. It's a big conference win. Spartans go to 3-0 on an emotional evening, and Cleves does break Scott Skiles' assist record at Michigan State. Bell chipping in 22 points. On the boards, strong really effort. Punish you. They really do. Look at the plus 12 all year. Even though they have four losses, they've dominated every game on the boards, especially at home. And tonight, I really thought they did it when it counted, and that's where Indiana just struggled. Michael Lewis, with a three-point lead, missed a key one-on-one right at the end of the game. He makes that. They go up five. They don't go overtime. In the overtime, they start out 0 for 4 from the field. They were tired, ran out of gas. Big win for Izzo, but Indiana's still legit. Indiana did well to stay within six rebounds of Michigan State. That is an unbelievable stat, plus 19 rebound margin at home. Rebound control. Like that. Every, you've got to punish people on the boards. Michigan State does it well. Indiana has had success. I thought they played very well against North Carolina in the Meadowlands in the Jimmy V Classic. This team is focused. Tough loss night for the Hoosier, but rebounding, obviously, in every game. We're seeing in our game tonight with Auburn just punishing offensive rebounds against Kentucky. Mentioned the miss of the one-on-one -on -one by Lewis, but Indiana still played well. Still a great road team. Meanwhile, in the Big East, Syracuse trying to remain the last of the unbeatens against Homeless West Virginia. Their home arena is being yeah. renovated. You know that. They're traveling around the state. Tonight's game was in Charleston, and it was a close one throughout most of the game. Eton Thomas with a big dunk inside. Syracuse would pull away a 10-point lead at the break. West Virginia will make the run on their quasi-home floor. Bowman, great no-look to Lionel Armstead for the bucket. It's down to a two-point game with seven and a half to play. But the Cues would pull away in the final minutes. Tony Bland, the steal. And the punch down in Syracuse, have we figured out how good they are? Or does this mean much? Yeah, I really think this is a big win for them on the road. This is their second road game. They go to South Carolina, who upset Arkansas. They play Thursday night before they come home this weekend to play the Irish. Will this game be a distraction? Because Eddie Fogler is sitting there waiting for Syracuse to come to town. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the Big East, Miami traveling to New Jersey to take on Seton Hall. And Johnny Helmsley stepping back and knocking down the deep triple to tie the game. This one was... Pretty much nip and tuck throughout. Helmsley, again. Rejection by James Jones. Helmsley, cherry picking. A little baby dunk there. But the Hurricanes, a nice win, and Seton Hall loses for the first time in the league. Both teams 2-1 and one on the conference. Well, Miami coming off the home loss to Syracuse last weekend, and yet Seton Hall shooting 4-17 for 17 on the threes. Not the type of home win 
that Tommy Amaker wanted tonight. Tough loss for Seton Hall after starting the conference 2-0. And, and it snaps their seven-game winning streak. Dave Bliss was the coach when Oklahoma opened Lloyd Noble Center oh, a long time ago. He's got a Baylor team that's on the uptick at 9-3, and three, but they're not going to get it done tonight. Final minutes, Oklahoma's taking them behind the shed. Well, Oklahoma's only loss was to Cincinnati at home, so you take a look at the Big 12. This has got to be Oklahoma, as well as Oklahoma State, the two other teams with Texas and Kansas who seem to be the cream of the crop in the Big 12. Halftime in the SEC, Auburn has the lead over Kentucky. We'll talk about a couple of other teams in the SEC, Tennessee and LSU, when we come back at halftime. Armed with the knowledge of the past, we move forward to create a better future for our children. As we look toward tomorrow, all eyes must focus on two key goals. First is increasing the budget for education. And second is... What is the second goal? Oh, baby. Hey, Mr. Dinky's busy. Nah. Hey, Dinky, I quit. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Mr. Dinky, I was, I'm not quitting. That was a joke, sir. If you're driving around with some cut-rate car insurance and you get into an accident, that's when it hits you. There's no State Farm agent to turn to for help. So the choice is yours. Get yourself a State Farm agent or get left out in the cold. There's the lodge. I'll make him turn. Wait a minute, the angle's too sir. Don't be a wimp. I know what I'm doing. Ah! <laughs> nice job. Now we're gonna have to call his parents. We'll use 1-800-COLLECT. Save him a buck or two. 1-800-COLLECT. Now you're being logical. Poor baby. Aww. Nice cat. Hi, <laughs> Mom. Use your head. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Or three. And welcome back to the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Kind of easy to overstate the importance of the Kentucky-Auburn game. After all, it's a long year in the SEC. A lot of depth in the conference. We're just getting going. But there are a couple of teams, Tennessee in the Eastern Division, LSU in the Western Division, that have been surprises, each with just one loss so far. Well, Tennessee's had that front line, solid front line coming back as we look at their schedule. Coming mm. into where they have to go at Florida on the road, the two home games they have with Vanderbilt, Mississippi, OK, Auburn coming up, and then Kentucky, where they won last year on the road. You got to love Yarborough, Victor, and Black in the front line. Tony Harris good, doing an excellent job running that team. I felt that they survived win the over. stretch here. Yeah. Well, no, they won't survive the <laughs> stretch. But they had the big win against LSU on the road this weekend, right. which gave them credibility to say, hey, we're still for real. Their only loss was to Tulsa down in Puerto Rico in the championship game over the holidays. Right, but they lost by 20 points in that game mysteriously. You said you get credibility by winning at LSU. That's a change because LSU has not been a quality win for a lot of people recently, but the Bayou Bengals have things going despite that loss to the Vols. They're still in second in that division, one and one, albeit. But here's their schedule, also a tough stretch yeah, coming up. tough. Coming off the loss at home to Tennessee. Now they have to go to Florida and Vanderbilt, and they can go down both of those games. And then, of course, look at Arizona coming up on the second. Well, when you look at what has happened to this team, I feel their win over Oklahoma State, which is Oklahoma State's only loss, gave them a little credibility. Can they win on the road? It's going to be tough with those two games, especially at Florida in game one. Yeah, and a nice little break between the SEC schedule. Here comes Arizona on the Saturday before the Super Bowl. At halftime, Auburn up by eight over the Wildcats. We're coming back. Carla, where are you? The meeting started. The world doesn't stop for the flu, but you do. Coughing, chills, fever, and body aches can make you miserable for days on end. But thanks to a new prescription pill, you can start to feel better. 
Now your doctor can prescribe Tamiflu, a new, easy-to-take pill that goes right to the very cause of the flu, attacking the flu virus itself. As soon as symptoms start, visit your doctor and ask if Tamiflu is right for you, so you can start feeling better. Tamiflu, helping you get through the flu. And now that the flu has hit, if you feel fluish, see your doctor early. And to learn to recognize flu symptoms, send for this free brochure and learn more about Tamiflu. One out of ten may experience mild to moderate nausea or vomiting. Fewer may experience bronchitis, sleeplessness, or dizziness. This season, you have Tamiflu, helping you get through the flu. Great day in the morning. What once was lost, now is found. I thought these were extinct. That's what they said about the coelacanth. A full just one of over 40 features now standard on the Volkswagen Jetta. It's a prehistoric fish. Disappeared over 10,000 years ago, and they caught one off the coast of Madagascar. Coelacanth. We are almost done at the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Just time to remind you to watch Sports Center with Rich Eisen and Sue Scott after the game. They will have news on Jerron Rush for UCLA, the suspended star, back practicing with the team. But don't get excited if you're a Bruins fan. That doesn't mean he's going to return anytime soon. Great first half for the All-American Chris Porter. Auburn has the lead the second half straight ahead. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more Autocraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 a quart? Yeah. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. America's most successful people get their start. Did somebody say McDonald's? ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Toyota, making it happen every day. Bernie's Memorial Coliseum, 10,500 on hand. They have enjoyed what they've seen so far. The Auburn Tigers leading 36 to 28. Those are the cliff dwellers behind us. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale. Look at this. Look at this poster right here. Oh, wow. Porter and Vitale, a hairy dipsy doodle, and those are some of the cliff dwellers. Uh, 
Hey, Chris Porter's done just about everything, though. He's been the inside presence tonight. Six out of seven. He leads the club in scoring with 12. Damian Fish back outside. Doc Robinson, the overall handling of the game, I think, has been the key. Well, you know, Robinson is five for five, and you got Mr. Porter, as you said, six for seven. That's 11 for 12. So inside, outside, they've really been outstanding. But there it is, Bowman with the miss. There's Mr. Porter working on the offensive boards, and he does that exceptionally well. And we're going to see a steal by Robinson, the little guy. And then he's under control here. Looks like he's going to fall due to an injury. Got a poise. Now we're going to watch right here. The big-time rebound, the kick out. Just an outstanding job by Porter and Robinson to spark this club here in the first half. But I think we're going to see Kentucky make a run. They're going to have to shoot better. Kentucky only 39%. Auburn at 53 and 4 for 8 from outside the arc. Kentucky has the rebounding edge. And Porter has led the way, as we said, with a dozen points. And Mamadou Njai is back. Heard his left hip early in the ball game. We thought maybe it was an ankle or a knee. We're glad it's a hip, and they have worked on it. He's back in the lineup. Looks to be running well. Moore hasn't had a rebound in the first half. Also, we're going to spot Kentucky. They were losing to Michigan State and the Georgia Tech at halftime and came back in one. And Auburn leading at the half has not lost this year. Robinson on the drive. I'll tell you, Doc Robinson's playing like a PT beer tonight. A prime time performer. Just attacks the gap, gets inside and converts. Again, the lead is 10. So many outstanding point guards this year in basketball. I saw the best of the country I saw last night. Colin Elamine. He takes it to a whole other level, doesn't he? Oh, he really shoots it. I'll tell you that. They're going to need Tayshawn Prince, Dick, to open things up here in the second half. That's only his sixth point. He's their leading scorer. Yeah, it was one for four in the first half. Really didn't have the kind of big game that he had in his last two against Vanderbilt and Georgia Tech. So a minute into the second half, it's down to single digits. 38-30. Lob underneath for Porter. That would have been a tough catch for anybody. Yeah, they telegraphed that. I mean, anybody could have seen they were trying to make that entry. Even a blind guy like me could have deflected that. <laughs> Bogan's looking for a pick, got it, and missed the three, but kept alive underneath by Allison, and he's fouled by Enzo. There's that athletic ability we talk about, the quickness, the explosiveness. He was a tremendous wide receiver. Great three-sport athlete in Tampa, as Dick mentioned earlier, and in fact, he'll be named Tampa's high school basketball player of the decade coming up later this month. I saw a kid who remember this game. He's a junior. My off day, I decided to go watch a high school game. <laughs> My wife couldn't believe it. I said, I'm going to go to dinner. Adrian McPherson from Southeast High School in Bradenton, the same school that produced Tito Warwick. He scored 42, but I'm going to tell you this. He's 6'4". They say he might be the best quarterback for the country. Oh, well. Tremendous talent. I'll keep my ears and eyes peeled on that one. Only you would go to a basketball game on a day off. What a great kid, too. A.D. McPher McPherson, he's a junior. Two free throws, making a six-point game. This is the closest Kentucky's been in a long time. A moment around a pick. He has not been shooting as well as last year. I think he's hurrying his shot. He's getting good looks, but he's hurrying his shot. He's not squaring, getting a good look at the goal. He's upset with himself, too. Cliff Ellis has tossed the coat aside. It is warming up in this place. His fifth-ranked Auburn. Their lead has been cut to six. I saw him with that yellow line paper. I thought maybe it's another song he's going to write. <laughs> he's a songwriter, a singer, loves beach music. Here's Fishback. It's the three. And guy's going to shag it down off the weak side. And he fouled. Either McGlore or Saul Smith, but it's going to be Saul Smith. And Jai came out of a great high school program, Maine Central Institute. They got a phenomenal player this year, Karan Butler. That's three fouls on Saul Smith. As father, Tubby Smith, looking on from behind Porter. <laughs> Starting five on the floor for Auburn, and a holding foul. Gives us a chance to remind you Thursday night on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Big Ten battle, number 18, Ohio State. Scooty Penn, Michael Redd and company will take on the Badgers of Wisconsin. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, two minutes into the second half in Auburn. Auburn leading by six, but Kentucky's making the run. Dick predicted right now, it appears. Bogans leaves it for McGlure with a left hand. Nice play by McGlure, switching to the left hand, right down to the gutter defense. The one thing about Saul Smith, he's an emotional leader. He's another coach on the floor. He really fires his teammates up. And the lead now sliced to four. Fishback 
fades away and buries him. They needed that jump shot, got the good look. You got to come up in his face to make him beat you to the basket. Smith working against Coleman. There's Prince wide open for three. He got hit. And he's going to the free throw line for three. He Fouls on Porter. Yes, sir. He got hit in that shot. First foul on Chris Porter, but it's not a smart one. Sending Tayshawn Prince to the free throw line for three free ones. You're really right about that, Brad. Hey, I'm talking about, we were talking about Doc Robinson playing really well. What about the story about his aunt? Amazing. She walked in that march with Martin Luther King. From back Selma to, to Birmingham, yeah. back to the Civil Rights Movement. She was just a little girl, but her family was part of that. And that's going to be a special coming up on Sports Center Monday night, done by Curry Kirkpatrick, a very moving story that I'm sure you're going to want to see. And that's January 17th, Martin Luther King Day. Don't miss it. Hurry's got a great, great package for you people. Monday night cover story on Sports Center. Deshaun got the first two. Kind of love what they have up behind the scoreboard. Well, they put it down now, but you, of course, say Brick City all the time. Somebody's got a brick. Yeah, they got a brick back there. <laughs> that thing's about the size of a Volkswagen. They don't have it up for Prince now because he hit his first two and he drains all three. And he looked really good draining those three as well. Nice stroke. There it is. Look at a brick. Brick City. Yes, sir. Brick City. <laughs> oh, wow. Some of the things you start, did. <laughs> Three-point game now. Not even three minutes into the half. Doc Robinson cuts in the paint. Going to try to leave it for Injai. Porterson touches inside. Fish back got his man in the air. And he nailed another one. I'll tell you one thing. Mr. Kentucky is stepping up. Out of Bowling Green, as Dick talked about earlier, he's got 13. And that leads everybody in scoring. Great balance as Blevins misses a three, though. Fishback's got 13. Robinson, 12. Porter, 12. Also a good defender. Oh, great no look pass by Pullman that Injai didn't get a chance to use because of a foul. So many kids growing up in Kentucky want to wear the Kentucky uniform, but they can only take so many. I should look at Fishback with a little head fake. I think about guys from Kentucky now starring elsewhere, Graves at Notre Dame, and certainly Lanky, Vanderbilt. Inside. That's where to go. Porter with 14 now. You got to get him some touches inside. He knows how to finish around the basket. Here comes the crowd again. Well, sir, they're in it, baby. They're in it. Levins has to watch out for that five-second call. He's been called once tonight. Bogan spins through traffic. Coleman trying to play for a steal. But Prince clears it. Allison, 10 on the shot clock. He tries to penetrate, and he's fouled in route. Auburn had everything going. They'd stretched the lead back out. They had the crowd back into it. We're going to watch Porter now working where he works best, down in the low blocks. But he's got a lot of moves around the basket. Very strong. He could finish. A lot of guys can't finish down in deep. So the inbounds for Kentucky with a fresh 35. We're almost four minutes into the second half. They trail by seven. Hogan left alone for three. It rimmed out, but it's knocked back in by Prince off the glass. That's what I like about Tayshawn Prince. He adds that special ability to go on the interior as well as the perimeter. 11 now for Tayshawn. I love guys that are versatile, that are multidimensional, who go inside, outside. Bogan's played for the steal. Fishback's going to penetrate. Got it. Hey, Fishback says, I'm not just a jump shooter, baby. I can go to the rack as well. 15 for David. Cliff Ellis has built something special here. And now Injai upset. He better watch out. Doc Robinson trying to cool him down. Speaks five languages. I wonder what he's speaking right here. He's, he's speaking hot. <laughs> he's got a kid that he convinced to come here by the name of Giambi, 6'10", from Oak Hill Academy. Tremendous talent. Injai with three fouls, but Auburn's lead back out to seven. Which Ford Center do you watch? Now at 6 p.m. only on ESPN. How do you enhance a V8 engine that produces 245 horsepower? A chassis that can haul up to 2,000 pounds. Or brakes that have four piston calipers? Simple. Add about six pounds of steel. Toyota Tundra, Motor Trend Truck of the Year, and four-wheel and off-road magazines, 4x4 four four of the year.
you're lucky, you'll remember the little moments. My wife. What's different between you and me is you're going to hell when you die. My daughter, Meadow. Gonna find out eventually what difference does it make. Are you in the mafia? I'm in a waste management business. My uncle adds to my general stress level. My nephew running things? Not in this life. <laughs> How are you feeling now? Good. Fine. Back at work. Still a lead for Auburn of seven points. And the guy that's done it inside and outside right now, Damian Fishback. Mostly yes. outside. Yes, Fishback shooting that jump shot. He's known as a shooter. There he is. Now the head fake. Pulls up. Shoots to Jay. Knocks it down. MBA has got the Manala. Look at him explode to the basket. Ready for this? He's also on a roll. 3.3 student in international business. Right now, he's leading his team in scoring with 15 points. Great balance. Porter has 14. Robinson has 12. And that's been really the story for Auburn this year. Well, Fishback went to Greenwood High School in Bowling Green, where he was Mr. Basketball and retired his jersey there. Here's the balance we talked about. Doc Robinson plays the most minutes, 28.4. But look at the balance scoring. Basically, you've got... Five guys in double figures, give or take a percentage point or two. You know, a lot of balance, but I really think those numbers change when they get into the SEC. Probably. They were dominating so many of the teams that they played early that you can substitute. You'll see Robinson and guys like Porter, their minutes are going to go up against the big-time competition. This guy's been the one guy that hasn't done anything offensively tonight. Again, injured in the first half. The left hip bothering him. McGlure goes up and drew a foul from Hamilton. Well, nice strong move by McGlure. Went to the basket and half the goal. He's been really shooting well on a free throw line. He's hit 35 of his last 40. This is a guy that didn't used to be able to shoot free throws very well, to be totally honest with you. And he's hit 35 of his last 40. Now we're going to see the screen up high. You see the screen right here. Now we're going to watch the ball release. Now look at the dump down inside. See, it was created, though, by the screen up top for Allison. Use that screen. Well, oh, he gets the bounce. Jamal even got the roll. When things are going right from the strap, they're really going right. He's got those long arms. We've talked about it so many times. How he made a mature decision coming back to Kentucky. For the Brick City, ready to go. I'm a and it doesn't slow him down. He has now hit 37 of his last 42 free throws. Kentucky is 9 for 9 from the stripe tonight. And they are back to within 5. Kentucky, what a program when you think about it. Three years in a row to the final game of the NCAA last year to the final eight. What a pick by Hamilton. Clevens just ran into one of those brick walls. Oh, that, is Porter. that is a brick wall. We're going to get Porter inside. Go back inside, Chris. He's got a slide inside. There, there he, he is. To the baseline. Rimmed out, but he got a good shot. And Tayshaun Prince high up for the rebound. Wayne Sal Smith and Levins together now. It's been a majority of this second half now. Better than a screen from Levins. He can shoot the rock from out on the perimeter. He's working the baseline right now, trying to get free. Meanwhile, Sal Smith works it back that way. They're down to 10 on the shot clock. Kentucky gets better spacing now than they did earlier in the year offensively. Nobody's going to have to hoist one here. Looks like it'll have to be Prince with the left hand. Got it. I'll tell you, what a nice move inside. Good execution. They showed a lot of poise, a lot of patience, and it led the points. The three Ps. Poise, patience, and points. And down to three points. Oh, yeah. Jams. Oh, yeah. That's the other P. If we're yes, sir. We got another P. <laughs> we got four Ps. What do you call that? The P Q, P, P quad. I don't P know what it is. <laughs> it's Porter now with 16. He goes right back to five. Trying to skip a pass inside. Pullman got a piece of it out of bounds. Last touch by Auburn. It'll be Kentucky ball. Cubby Smith, great job at Tulsa, Georgia. Now look at him posted inside, and that's where he really excels. It's like an m, &M or It's a mismatch inside trying to defend him. Here's Tayshaun Prince now. He's going to go down to the low box. He's a lot stronger than what he looks. Saul Smith around a pick on the baseline. Came up short on a three. Pulled down by Brewer. Home and a skip pass, trying to get it to Hamilton, and McGlure stole it. Nice job getting back defensively by Jamal McGlure. We have good defensive transition by Kentucky. Oh, they missed Allison with a cut. Prince against Porter. Jump stop in the lane, lost the handle. Porter took it from him. Porter just so physical. Chipola in college, junior college, All-American. Hamilton in the paint, strong with a left hand. What a rebound by Saul Smith. He got up there. The little guy really went up there. 
His daddy couldn't jump like that. <laughs> he was too tubby. Yeah. 13-10 <laughs> <laughs> to go. Tubby's doing some coaching, though. His team's down by five. He's a competitor. You don't get to the top of the mountain like he does without being a competitor. Blevins worked three and missed it. McGlure trying to go back up to the foul. Good inside position by McGlure to get the opportunity to go to the free throw line. That's going to be on Porter. That will be his second. What a big night in terms of what a doubleheader. Michigan State, Indiana, this game here. These are two really outstanding basketball games. Super Tuesday on ESPN. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale and our crew here at Bird Eves Memorial Coliseum where Auburn has a mass substitution set to come in. But right wow. now, Jamal McGlure is going to try to make it 38 of his last 43. He's on a tear. He's so confident that's going to This is it really does. And hey, what a great game that was. Michigan State, what about the emotion we saw? Yeah. Tom Izzo winning his 100th game. And then Bobby Knight's club. Those kids really have overachieved all year long. They have one star, A.J. Knight, and a bunch of really hustling, scrappy players. Kentucky at the strike. They've been percent. a good free throw shooting team all year about 70 percent tonight they haven't missed and the war is three for three yet yeah, it really improved on a free throw line in fact this is one of the better years in quite a while you talk about 0 for three for Auburn the only guy to be on the line has been Doc Robinson yep. the floor knocks another one down see you got to put up the floor with that and that he worked really hard to improve his free throw right. shooter and Kentucky gets it down to three again <laughs> Made some mean screens across the baseline. Got a great shot on the baseline, and Allison pulls it out of there. Kentucky with a chance to cut it to one. Give and go. Allison floats and got it. Well, nice play again by McGlure. He gave the ball up. He's playing with his head on right now. He's just playing basketball, and that's great to see. Auburn's going to take a timeout with 12.35 left. Their lead has been sliced from being up by eight at halftime to down. Or rather up just one, thanks to the Kentucky drive. People are beginning to think of the automobile, not just as a family vehicle, but as a personal and individual means of transportation. The job of a powerful engine. Now for a moment, imagine yourself as driver of this automobile. You really have to drive it. At the Chrysler Proving Ground. Give them an expressway and their drivers are well. I think we've made the scenic back roads fun to drive. Or give them any country or suburban road, rough or smooth. They're the type of people who like the feel of a fine machine. Who love to drive the renowned engineers of Chrysler. A minimum of ornamentation and a minimum of chrome moldings. Need a regular firecracker. The sounds of nature sing their prettiest over the rich, throaty obligato of his engine. Even sheet metal can have a soul. And they give you back the romance of driving. And that is why these will never land on an ordinary car. And you find out what exceptional unity of man and machine has been achieved. Really? It's go time. Creepy mouse with the goggles is back in my apartment. Really? Can I hang here? Absolutely. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. I used to be a car racer. You don't play basketball like Kentucky and win as many games as they do without being able to come back, Dick, and they've done a little bit of everything right in the second half. Well, you know, they've won more games than anybody in the history of their basketball in college basketball. Now, watch this right here. Now, McGlure makes a really good play. Freeze it. See, right here. He's going to give it back. Just a simple give and go, and he's going down to gut with the ball. Right there. Just gave it up. Nice little simple play. Toughest guy to guard is a guy that moves without the basketball. Yep. So many kids always want to pound the ball to the deck and don't play without the ball. Allison's eighth point, his biggest of the night. It makes the Auburn lead a single digit with 12 and a half to go. I think of Auburn, I see that jersey. I think of a round down of rebounds. Sir Charles Barkley. Yep. And the person, oh. some of those guys, yes, the person, Chris Morris. On the baseline. Doc Robinson, and he pulls up limping. Yes, sir, that could be a big loss. He is really limping. They got a four on two. Kentucky for the oh, lead. What, nice what a nice pass. They got to get a look at timeout here. That's Kentucky's first lead. 
I believe, since it was 3-2 to two at the beginning of the game. We felt they would make a run. They're just too talented, and they have so much confidence. Doc Robinson limping off. That is not a good sign. That's a big, big loss with Doc going to the sideline, one of the premier point guards in the SEC. The first lead since the opening couple of shots of the ball game for Kentucky. Now they're up by one. Nice pass by Kamara. Good look inside the Bogans. Now let's see if Auburn can answer offensively. Jamison Brewer gave his eligibility second semester on the floor now. Super quick. Got a great future on point guard. Porter trying to dish it inside to Injai. And a timeout was called by Kentucky by Bogans on the floor before they were able to get that to be a jump ball and possession situation. So 11.40 remaining. Kentucky making its run. And now they are in front. 49-48 Wildcats. something Sony can help you do. So just call 1-877-295-SONY and we'll send you a free personal home entertainment planner which includes a buyer's guide so you'll know exactly what you need to know before you shop. The planner also comes with a complete listing of all the products that make up the Sony home entertainment universe. To get started on yours, call toll-free 1-877-295-SONY and we'll help you through the process. Auburn's floor leader is on the sideline injured with an ice bag on his thigh. Meanwhile, on the floor, Auburn trails Kentucky now by one. Kentucky in the midst of a 10-2 run in the last three and a half minutes. Bogans for three. Porter way up for the rebound. That's just a major league rebound. Great inside position. Kentucky really played exceptionally well in his spurt to take the lead. Auburn's got to regain its poise now. And if they're going to regain the lead, they better go inside to miss the border. They can't handle him around the basket. Fishback got his man in the air. Nails it outside. I really like his game. He's more than just a jump shooter. He's just not a long-range shooter. He's a medium-range shooter, and he can attack the basket. Another fish back whack, and his team back in front. Kamara short outside, gets his own rebound. He'll try it from the free throw line and got it. Give him a second opportunity, and he converts. Nobody blocks out. One of the lost arts in college basketball. He's sawing back and forth. One point game again. It's Kentucky by one. Sharper Brewer now playing on the perimeter. Fish back, fouled by Allison. Maybe a fishback. I'll tell you one thing, he's going to earn some bragging rides back home with his performance now when he goes back to Kentucky. Dick, the top three guys, Robinson, Porter, and Fishback in this game are 21 of 27 from the floor. The bad news is the rest of the team's two out of 16. Exactly. Really dominating with their big three. We got another. Doc Robinson still. They're working on him on the sideline and hopes he can return. Right now, Kentucky leads by one. Right now, when you choose from the lowest priced minivan to the ultimate, you can get 1,500 cash allowance or 0.9% APR, which means you can save over 4,700 in finance charge savings on Chrysler Town & Country and the popular Voyager. Now, get 1,500 cash allowance or 0.9% APR on all minivans at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer today. Armed with the knowledge of the past, we move forward to create a better future for our children. As we look toward tomorrow, all eyes must focus on two key goals. First is increasing the budget for education. And the second is... What is the second goal? Howie, your favorite. 
Miss, how can this cost more than a buck? It's a piece of rope. You can't get anything for a buck these days. I get a 20-minute call for only 99 cents. Have you been standing near the catnip? Oh, oh he's talking about 10, 10, 2, 20. It's only 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes and just 7 cents a minute after that. All day, every day. That's cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the best part is no monthly fees. Fees, no monthly fees. <laughs> Good. Those can be very irritating. <laughs> Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale in Auburn, Alabama, where the fifth-ranked Tigers now trail by one. It is quiet at this capacity crowd of over 10,000 tonight as Kentucky's come out in the second half. Been perfect from the free-throw line. Tayshawn Prince, 13 points to lead them. Auburn, 50 points, 14 in the second half. And I talked about Porter, Fishback, and Robinson have done all the damage, 21 of the 27 and 45 of their points. Looks like Mr. Robinson's getting ready to check in. Tayshawn Prince has had a solid second half. Yep. Porter got away from his man. Flying 15-footer won't fall. And Kamara the rebound. Yeah, Kamara really quick to the basketball. Whoops. Tangle up between McGlore and Injai. And no foul call. Paul Smith had an opening. Got it to Kamara. Nice ball movement by Kentucky. And McGlore lost the handle. Porter goes to the deck. Who's going to get it? Looks like a football scramble. Yep. And possession arrow is going to stay in Kentucky's hands. See, the one thing right there, McGlure didn't step to the basketball. He was waiting for the ball to come to him. For many of you kids out there that play the post, you got to step to the basketball. Take a look right here. See, he waits for the ball to come to him rather than go attack the basketball. So Kentucky will inbound almost the midway point of the second half, and they lead by one. They've won 14 straight over the Auburn Tigers. And as Dick mentioned earlier, we're talking about a team that was the number one seed in the regionals last year, went 29 and four, the Auburn Tigers, and two of those four losses to Kentucky. You know, 1990, they beat them, as we said, in Rick Pitino's first year. And I remember in 1988, I did the game. They were number one in America, Kentucky, and they got beat by John Taylor. Hit a big three to beat them at the buzzer down at Rupp Arena. Tomorrow with three, they're gonna have to get one up there. Allison got a good look, and it rattled out on it. Coleman the rebound. Coleman's due to make some shots. He's very active, playing hard. He's due to make some shots. He feeds inside to Porter. Porter double, tripled, in fact. Trying to get rid of it. Left it for Coleman on the baseline. He almost made a reverse layup. Well, I don't know. You know, I'm not a mathematical genius, but if three guys are on you, two are open. That's pretty much true. Prince has given Kentucky its biggest lead of the night. Tayshawn Prince really running the court, scoring on the baseline, scoring from the perimeter. He is starting to become a star. I'm not ready to label him star yet, but he is getting close, Mr. Nestler. A constellation gathering for him. Yes, sir. He's getting close to being a super south. 53-50 now. Auburn has gone dead on offense. Porter backs out. Cross courts it to Robinson. He's back in there. He's doubled on the baseline. And he's fouled on the baseline. It's going to be McGlore who will pick up his third. You know what's really happening out there? They're not doing a great job finding the open man against double teams and triple teams. You've got to be able to recognize and be alert and have that vision to find the open man. But you know what Kentucky's six-game winning streak has been courtesy of is their defense. defense in the second half it's been defense they do a great job rotating helping you can see the teaching that staff does as well guys like Sutton certainly on that staff and Felton they do a heck of a job teaching that defense along with Tubby Coleman on the inbound misses shagged down by Robinson I don't want to forget coach Finney as well Porter feeds Coleman inside, and it's swatted out of there by Stone. He's not going to get those kind of shots on the inside. He's not going to get those shots. Prince is four for four in this half. After going one for four in the first half, but he's got to go to the perimeter and look for that jump shot. He's got no shot in here. He's got no chance against that size. Kentucky's third block shot of the night. So 25 on the shot clock, under nine on the game clock, and Porter will inbound. What they've done really well, Kentucky, you said a little bit earlier, Brad, they have taken this crowd and silenced it. Absolutely. This crowd is ready to try and explode, but they'll only explode if the team helps them. Robinson laid it up there almost as if he was trying to get it to Porter. And a foul inside, I believe, on Kamara. Tubby 
Willie Smith looks on in disbelief. That shot by Robinson when he penetrated there was almost as if to say, I might not hit this layup, but I know number four is going to be on the backside to help me out. Nice when you got a buddy like that to help you out with those kind of legs. <laughs> right. Robinson, open look, way out three. Porter kept it alive again. He's just a big-time offensive rebounder. Oh, he forced that shot. Had the line drive one, and now the outlet. Charles Smith to Tayshawn Prince. Oh, smart play. Good basketball IQ. Tayshawn Prince didn't have the opportunity. Kamara lays one in close. I'll tell you one thing. That kid is earning his minutes. He is really earning his PT. What I like about him, he didn't sulk and pout when he went to the sideline. It was then. And now it's a five-point Kentucky lead. This Kentucky team is trying to send a message across America. Are uh, the ghosts of... Kentucky Auburn games passed coming back to haunt the Tigers. Auburn hadn't scored in over three minutes. Coleman gave up a three, and Tayshaun Prince fouled Fishback, I believe. You know what Kentucky does really well defensively, Brad? They always challenge your shot. You don't get a lot of open shots against them. Right. Hamilton's going to come back in, and Injai will come out. Let's see if that solidifies the middle a little bit. You know, Chris was talking earlier during the halftime about the schedule of Auburn and how they played one nationally ranked team and they lost, and he's so accurate, and that's this why I think tonight Auburn, is significant, not just for the fact that it's in the SEC. The fact of the matter is you want to prove to yourself, most of all, not to America, but to yourself, so you can beat a legitimate top-rated team. There goes a free chance. Timeout. With 7.53 remaining, Kentucky in front, its biggest advantage of the night, courtesy of Jules Kamara, the Cats up five. Hey, girls, why so glum? And you are? Come in. I'm the 1-800-Collect-Advice guy. Talk to me. Well, we did do some excellent shopping. Manicure, pedicure, two pups and seven colors. And a henna tattoo. So? We're out of town and out of cash. Call Daddy. He'll wire you more. Use 1-800-COLLECT and save him a buck or two. He'll think you're responsible. Yeah, excellent. Hey, which color? Mauve or dirt? Oh, you're on your own then. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. What if your car slips off the road in Slippery Rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent. Almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis or just a little one. A good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls, or you have some trouble in paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield, even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. Dick, here we are in our second week of January, and Prince is playing like it's 1999. <laughs> I tell you, I like that. The artist going at work right here. A little baseline jumper against Mr. Porter. And then he shows he can run the break. There he is in transition with a good catch. He also made a great play early when he pulled the ball out. Didn't force the action. He's just giving him solid basketball. He's becoming a star. Four for four here in the second half. Three free throws on the line in the second half as well. He said, what are you going to show that one for four for? What are you going to show that for? He said, can you leave that out of the air? <laughs> oh, leave it to our graphics people. The spoil is party. His family's watching in California. He's got 17. His team is up five. We've got 7.50 remaining. And Kentucky has dominated the last six minutes. Auburn needs some stops right now. Kentucky's getting that bounce that gives you that confidence look. Stone trying to go up with it. And he's fine. Nope. Okay, knocked away. They're going to call on the baseline. Kentucky's such a different team than we had earlier in the year. They just have a certain bounce to them, better spacing, better execution, and they got chemistry. They got a feeling. You can see they're enjoying playing with one another. They got down 14 and never got rattled. Paul Smith working against Holman. Got three for a 14-footer and missed it. Kamara on the baseline. 
I tell you, Kamara's not the guy possessed. He's playing so hard. This so one's going to go to Auburn on a jump ball. Possession arrow. Nice hustle by Fishback to hit the deck. Coming up Friday night on ESPN at 7 Eastern, it's Outside the Lines, presented by AT&T. Bigger, stronger, faster. The athlete of the 21st century. Jason Seahorn, Daryl Johnson, and Brevin Knight take us through training regiments of the future. Will there really be a bionic man in sports? You'll find out Outside the Lines Friday at 7, only on ESPN. I'll tell you, they are getting bigger and stronger. There's a guy that's got some legs that seem like they're bionic when he goes in the air. Sometimes you look at the court and you don't think the court is big enough. That's I mean, right. Everything is stayed the same. The players, I mean, in terms of the court, geographically 94 by 50. And the players just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Nice speed to the post. Hamilton with the left hand. Porter trying to tip it in. Got it back again. And that's where he excels. Attacking, attacking, attacking. They really needed that basket. 18 for Porter. It's back to a three-point game. Here comes the crowd. And that's what an All-American is supposed to do. Make the big play when your team is struggling. Bogans. Kamara. He never met a shot he didn't like. Just one on the baseline and fish back a rebound. Here come the Tigers. Doc Robinson ahead to Porter. He got it. What a great catch. That was not an easy play. Not an easy play. Is he hurt down there? He got tangled up. Saul Smith. Roll over the top of him as he hit the baseline, and he is screaming in pain. He's holding his wrist. It's not intentional. It certainly was not deliberate. And the trainer's out in a hurry. He went down, hit the deck right in front of the cameraman. Ordered nine rebounds to go with his 20 points. Man, they can't even get him rolled over to see what the problem is. He's on his own injury agenda right now because of the pain. Ten out of 14 from the field tonight. Doc Robinson, here's the outlet. Now you'll see the end of the play after the basket. He sneaks out in transition, makes the catch, gets nailed by Sala, and Sal falls over the top. And I still, I think it's his elbow. Maybe his left elbow or wrist. It's kind of hard to tell. It looked like the wrist, but you may be right. There's the catch. And this tough defensive play by Smith. Really nothing there. Not a lot of contact. Still hasn't hit him. And now he's up. I think it's his elbow. He's shaking it off. Might be the crazy bone of all time here. He heads to the huddle to a, a standing sign. ovation. That's a good sign to see that the kid looks like he'll be okay. And you hear the chance of CP in the background. CP's got that dude. They love him down here. Great personality. It's great to see a kid like that. Say the heck with the dollars of the NBA. Let me come back to school. Wow. They can barely touch that left arm, whether it's the wrist or the elbow. I don't know. We'll try to get a word on the next break. From the Auburn bench. Meanwhile, on the floor, a little over six minutes left, and Auburn trying to turn up the defensive heat. Well, Kentucky going to take advantage of Porter out of the lineup. Hamilton a steal. Over to Robinson. Robinson looks to play the lane, got it to Pullman, and a foul. Doc Robinson said, I threw it to the wrong guy. He's pointing on his head. And a foul on Pullman. Kentucky did a great job in defensive transition, getting the charge. All the little things that it takes that it takes to win. Getting back defensively, helping one and out, one another out, stepping in, taking the charge. As I said, Pullman filled the lane as Hamilton did, and Robinson thinks he went to the wrong side. They gave it to him too soon. Gave him the basketball too soon. Doesn't make any, doesn't make a lot of bad decisions, but he made a bad one there. Under six minutes, Kentucky by one. Bogans, free on the baseline. Missed the shot. Rebound. Fishback's got another one. His ninth rebound to go with his offensive exploits tonight, where he's got 17 points. Yeah, he's really played well defensively as well as offensively. Auburn with a chance to regain the lead if they score. Holman very active without the basketball. He usually means you're going to get three off the screen. It'll be interesting to see how their offense runs without their All-American in there. Porter on the sideline. Robinson. Got rejected. Ted Hillary calls a foul on Saul Smith before 
He ever got to the lane. That's four on Saul Smith. They don't even look inside to Enjai at all. He doesn't get any touches, and he has really improved his offensive game. It gets a little frustrating as a big guy. I was talking to Sam Bowie before about that. And it's about, you're a big player. You want to get the ball a few touches. By the way, Porter has his season high today at 20 points. He's looking at big Sam there. Working with Tom Leach. Hey, we want to send our best out to our guy, Mr. Hacker. Well, Hacker, yeah. bad vocal cords. Ralph's been Tom fighting Robinson that thing for about four, four weeks. He's on a uh, DL. He's on the DL or the injured reserve, whatever you want to call it. We hope he's back quickly. Robinson hits the free throw after missing his last three. And here comes Porter with an elbow wrap on. And now the house is about to come down. Yes, sir, the house is on fire. The big house is ready to explode. It is back to being a Porter house. Yes, sir, their man is on the floor. Medium well. I think it's getting to be well. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson missed the second. Free throw shooting is something that's really been biting Auburn all year. Well, right there, Mr. Robinson was 0 for 3 in the first half. Comes up empty air. I'm 1 for 2 out of Dick, we couldn't ask for much more. Big game in the SEC. Five minutes to play. We're tied. Number five in America. Playing against one of the really super programs in America. Prince. Up, off the glass, tipped in by either McGlore or Kamara. I think it's, I think it's Kamara. We'll unofficially give it to him. I think you're right. And a left hand, Kamara up there. It's the way it was stripped tonight. Michigan State, Indiana, Auburn, and Kentucky coming to the end. Robinson put up and nail a jumper. And yes, sir, he looks at the football. He smiles at us. Hey, what's he looking here for? Play hoop, baby. Look at him. 15 for the doctor. The doctor right there with the little J. Oh, you gotta love this, Mr. Nestle. You gotta love this. 57 apiece. This is worth getting up 445 in the morning. McGraw, the seven low with the jam. Oh, I envied you this morning. I envied you. You and your big car riding down from Atlanta at 445. I spread it out in a hotel. I said, where's my guy, Nestle? <laughs> Two-point lead, Kentucky. Coleman hasn't hit a big shot all night. He's not gonna get three here either. A switch on, they got Kamara, that means it's a mismatch. 14 on the shot clock. We're under four minutes in the game. Kentucky does a great job with their switches. Robinson missed that one from 17, and Blevins with a rebound. Remember what's at stake here. They need a win psychologically over Kentucky. They have lost their last 14 times to the Big Blue. It's been 10 years, a long 10 years for Auburn fans. 3.25 to go. Porter played for the steal. And Kamara might still lose the handle on the ball. And he does. Robinson comes up with it. Pullman's wide open. Oh, 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 oh. Got it. There it is. There it is. Robinson to Pullman. And jumping with joy. Yes, sir. 59 apiece. That was a two-pointer. And Pullman smiling for the first time tonight. And the Cliff Dwellers are jumping with joy behind us. Going bananas. I hope nobody falls off that clip. They're going to land right on our back. And I hope they don't explode if they win this game <laughs> over the top of us. McGlore, the hook, he lost the handle. And now a foul is going to be called on Coleman, who's battling for the loose ball rebound. What a big night Tuesday has been. I mean, that Michigan State-Indiana game was a nail-biter. We got a mailbox masher here. 2.48 left, tied at 59. Kentucky really draws the best out of everyone. Everyone emotionally. It's like the fighting Irish in football. Everybody plays at another level against them. Certain uniforms and certain reputations. Duke's got that now. North Carolina. Allison goes to the free throw line. He's two for two tonight. Eight points for Desmond. But that's what makes you great, Brad. When you really, really have to be challenged every night. He missed it, and Porter's got another rebound. I tell you what, the elbow's not bothering him now. He is really skying. Cross-court pass, fish back, made a tough catch inside, inside, in close. Lost it, out of bounds on his second try. Yeah, They'll go back to Kentucky. Didn't have the good angle inside, and John, the one time he got the rock, and he got it in a poor angle. Two minutes, 36 seconds remaining in regulation play. Auburn saw a big lead, drift away. But Scott Pullman came up with a steal. Doc Robinson found him. He hit it. We're tied at 59. Get the Compact Presario 5700 and Internet Bundle for just $9.99, and you'll get more than a great Internet PC. You'll also get the Internet free. No gimmicks, no fooling. Plus, you'll get a 15-inch monitor, color printer, Intel Celeron processor, and one-touch Internet access. All this for only $9.99, plus the Internet for free.
Call 1-800-331-8154 to get yours today. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. I'll have the uh, beef fajitas with a smoothie, please. And I'll start with the uh, house salad and the uh, uh, Friday's I can't read it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Chrysler, giving you back the romance of driving, and by Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers. The fifth-ranked Auburn Tigers, the number 23 Wildcats of Kentucky, and they're giving us a wild one here. With 2.36 remaining, it's tied at 59. We had one tie in the first half at 9-9. We've had three ties in the last two minutes. Doc Robinson saying, this is our house, baby. We're going to get the last three minutes. Kentucky saying, we don't care where we're playing. We're going home with the W, and that's why we got a shootout here at the end. Hey, last year, Porter was 10 for 30 in two games against Kentucky. Today, he has been outstanding. All things even on our reset as you look. Points, timeouts, and foul. Oh, but look, I'm knocked down there. They missed that. He got knocked down with the catch. Starting five on the floor for Kentucky. And Bolden's a jump stop. Laid one up there, and Porter pulled down a rebound. And he's fouled by Bolden. I'll tell you one thing, you want a rebound at a crucial moment, I want this guy going after him. 11 rebounds for Porter to go with his 20 points. He's putting on a show for us. I'll tell you, he's one of the great front court players coached by Mr. Ellis. Think about some of the guys he had in the front court. Morris Grant, Dale Davis, Eldon Campbell, Sharon Wright, Terry Tyler. He's coached some great front court players that went on to the NBA while he was at Clemson. Here's last year's SEC Player of the Year. The preseason choice is SEC Player of the Year. He has not made a trip to the free throw line, as you see tonight, and you saw his percentage on the year. Nolan Richardson speaks so highly of Mr. Porter. Free throws, free throws, free throws. A oh, problem for Auburn all year. That's a problem for a lot of schools. Really creates a nightmare for coaches. You bust your gut and then you go to the line and you come up empty. Here's Kentucky with under two minutes to go. A chance to regain the lead. Bogans around a pick. Packs it down to McGlure, who got two men on him and missed the shot. And Doc Robinson with a rebound. He didn't get the call. He's going to get a call there and go to the line where he's like automatic right now. I say you got to go up to Coleman got it into Inja, in close. Porter with a tip. There's Mr. Porter and climbing the glass. What a big offensive rebound, Brad. 12 rebounds, 22 points. And he's holding his elbow. He's playing like a kid possessed. He's playing hurt, and he's playing, giving everything he can. Trying to tuck that elbow in on the defensive end. What a great moment here by this kid. Inside, McGlure had swatted out of there, but there's a foul. And McGlure and Injai both go down, and Porter's down again as well. I'll tell you, he's in pain. Reminiscent of years ago, I had a game with Indiana when Neil Reed was hurt. It was unbelievable watching him play a pain with his shoulder for Indiana. Porter's going to step back into the block as we get another look at the replay. Injai blocked the shot, but Porter got him down low. The third foul on Porter. Watch the offensive rebound right corner right now. Look at him attacking the glass, number four. Give him a little seam, a little gap, and he's right up on the glass. Jamal McGlure has been shooting free throws better than anybody in the SEC right now as he hit five straight this half. Kentucky is 12 of 13 from the line. It's tough to realize he did 69 percent. You and I have seen him the last two weeks. He looks like 99 percent. He's been automatic. He yeah, he's been automatic. They're tied at 61. We've got... Just over a minute to play. Will we have overtime in Auburn as we had in the Michigan State-Indiana oh, game? I hope we do. I hope we stay here all night. Forget about flying out. Who wants to go out of town? So we're tied at 61 with a minute and six remaining. And if this one doesn't go overtime, we're a minute and six away from 
Stuart Scott and Rich Eisen with the top stories. Dan Gailey gone. What went wrong in Dallas? They'll have the answers for you, or at least some of the speculation. Question tonight, who else? For the Baseball Hall of Fame and NBA updates and all the scores and highlights from around college basketball, which included Michigan State, an overtime win over Indiana. Brad Nestler and Nick Vitale may be ready to go into overtime here at uh, Auburn. We'll find out. You know what I want to do right now? I want to get my resume out. I'm working on it. I'm going to bring it down to Jerry Jones. You don't know this. I was undefeated. Coach football. I right. was undefeated two years coaching junior high football. I didn't know anything. I didn't know split tees, <laughs> wing tees. The only thing I knew is if the scoreboard said they had six, we better get seven, baby. <laughs> Right now, the scoreboard says 61-61, and Kentucky and Auburn saying we better get two more and then worry about it. Florida's fifth double-double this year. We're at one minute remaining. One minute remaining. This guy's got to watch as well now offensively. Got to really come up and contain him, not let him get a good look. Here's fish back with Prince on it. It's Hamilton banging down low with Tamara. Fish back just backs up, fires. Rebound, Hamilton had his hands on it, and McGlure fouled it. Was not a good shot that time by Damian Fishback. Didn't get it within the realm of the offense. He was just determined to shoot that basketball. That is four fouls on Jamal McGlure. And now Hamilton will go to the free throw line where you don't want him there if you can help it. He's three of 17 of the year. That is 18%. I'll tell you what a tough game he had last year. Breaking it late when he went home in a pickup game at Christmas and then had the toughest luck you can have. He lost his mom, and it was really a tough year. That just shows you what I was talking about. You just should not have him at the free throw line if you can help him. Yeah, he short arms the shot. He doesn't shoot it with any confidence whatsoever. I was watching him in the pregame practice as well. Harvard's only hit one free throw tonight, though. I know, that's a nightmare. That's an absolute nightmare. Here you are, coming down the stretch, down the wire. What's kept Kentucky in the game is making free throws. Shows you the essential importance of making those free throws. I hope he hits this one. He does. Fishback almost got an offensive rebound. In fact, it is Auburn ball. Really, the hustle of Fishback made that happen. Fishback playing well on both ends of the court. He's had a couple of huge rebounds in the last five minutes. Hamilton goes out now. Injai comes in. You got to take him out. He's a liability on the floor right now because you're going to put him on a free throw line. Shaquille O'Neal's had that problem as an NBA player down the out. stretch of the game. He becomes a liability. Hamilton right. missed those two badly. It remains 61-61. It also remains Auburn ball, though, with 42.9 on the game clock and obviously a fresh 35 on the shot clock. So Auburn can hold on to this ball and wait for a good shot. That's what they're hoping for, to try to regain the lead. Don't forget, tomorrow on ESPN, join us for a doubleheader of ACC action at 7 o'clock. Georgia Tech takes to the road, and they'll meet a red-hot Duke team at Cameron Indoor, ranked number seven in the country. Then at nine, 14th-ranked North Carolina will battle Wake Forest. Doubleheader, college hoops tomorrow night on ESPN. You'll see Jason Williams and Joseph Forte in their battle. Brad, it's so important for kids to understand right now. Score, time, strategy, understand what the coach wants to achieve, and making sure the right people are taking the shots. Stuart and Rich are holding out for Sports Center, which is about 43 seconds away, barring overtime. Well, Stuart's ready to call somebody to bomb, and it might be missed the quarter. See, he's the guy you got to watch on the offensive glass. If there's a missed shot, you got to make sure you block him out and contain him. Robinson, a three. He got it! Oh, it's up! It's up! Look at him! Look at him! Look at the emotion! Will it happen? Will they break that 14-game streak against Kentucky? Not on Kentucky, but the doctor is in. 64-61. Somebody better tell the doctor, though, it's not over. It's not over. Plenty of time. A house ball from way outside. He took that one from Opelika and drilled it. Opelika, where's that out, baby? He's down the road a piece. Wow. Here he is. He's going to let it fly. He's an outstanding point guard. He can make big shots. He gets the ball to the right people. He guards and defends. 18 for Doc Robinson. None bigger than that one. His first three-pointer of the night, did it come at a good time or what? And he showed a lot of emotion. Look at us here. Do you smell what Doc is cooking? Well, he just cooked in the biggest shot of the night with 24 seconds left. He has a chance to be the BMC. Big man on campus tomorrow if they can come up with a stop right here. He's got 18. Fishback's got 17. Porter has 22. And Auburn is 24 seconds away from ending a huge jinx. 
and if against the guys in blue. If you're thinking about a three, you got to think about Saul Smith's capable, and so is Prince. Saul kicks it out to Prince. Way downtown. He got fouled. He got fouled. No foul call. Rebound. Oh. Up with a shot. He'll go to the free throw line. It takes off Prince. He's saying, what are you guys looking at? I cannot believe that he called a foul line out there. Fisher was staring right at him. I mean, I cannot believe he didn't call a foul there. I don't blame Tommy Smith. I mean, Brad, take a look right here. Take a look right here. There's no contact. I watched the body fall right into it. And you can see the trajectory of the ball change dramatically. No foul call, and Logan fought for it. Got it back, and he was fouled. So he's going to go to the free throw line with two huge free throws up front. Logan's just a freshman. That quiets the crowd down. He's a big-time freshman. Played with Joseph Forte at the math, and now you've got to... Make sure you block out if you're all going to come up with this and don't let them get inside. Because Kamari is quick to the basket and so is McGlure. Kentucky's free throw shooting has kept them in the game. 14 to 15, will they be 15 and 16? Yes. yes. Sir. Now full court pressure, try to make the steal. Another timeout taken by Kentucky. With 13.3 left, Kentucky trailing by one. You know, I believe in making people earn their shots. This and when a kid is fouled right in front of the vision of an official, you got to blow oh, that man. whistle. you got to blow that. So as Tubby Smith looks up at the clock, his team trailing by one. We've seen Kentucky Dick in this situation so many times. It's what Auburn can handle now in the last 13 seconds. You would think Kentucky's going to send him to the free throw line right away. Well, you know, right now, Kentucky's going to try to make the steal, as we all know. Right. If the steal doesn't happen, you're going to foul, and they're going to go to the line. And they've been a nightmare at the free throw line when you talk about Auburn. That has been their horror tonight, going to the free throw line. And even their point guard, who's outstanding, has been a nightmare on the free throw line, Doc Robinson. So that even gives you a little bit more of a problem. It seems over the limit. One time out remaining for each. Possession error to Kentucky. The lead is Auburn's. Here's the full court heat. Coleman is a good free throw shooter. They're going to try to keep it in his hands, and Blevins fouls him immediately. That was a smart move by Cliff Ellis and his gang to make sure they got the ball in the hands of Coleman. A lot of coaching going on during those timeouts. It's not just about, hey, go out and win the game. It's Scott Pullman, first trip to the free throw line. He led the club last year at 86%, down a little bit this season, 77% shooter from the free throw line. He's really down shooting the ball from the perimeter as well as the free throw line this year. And I think it's just hurrying his shots. You can hear a pin drop. And he's got the roll. He got the bounce. Now, here's the big one that makes it a three-point game. And then it's some decision making. I've often said, and the late Jimmy Valvano said the same, if it gets within five seconds and you're up three, don't let him get the good look at the three. Make him go to the free throw line. And Cliff Ellis said, if we hit this, call a timeout. Holman, second and two, he got them all. He nailed them both, and a lot of confidence as well. Now some strategy. I wouldn't let him shoot a three if I was Auburn. Timeout taken by Auburn. They lead 66-63. Don't forget Thursday night. I don't know if it could get much better than what we've seen on this Super Tuesday. But at 9 o'clock Eastern, Big Ten battle between Ohio State and the Badgers of Wisconsin. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. I'll tell you, there aren't many guys in America that got more out of their players than Dick Bennett down of Wisconsin. And especially down here, they're so tough defensively, Mike Kelly and company. Right now, Brad, what I want to say is simply this. you got 10 seconds on the clock. You put some pressure, you let them bring the ball up the court, and then you really attack and make and you make them go to the free throw line. You don't let them shoot the three. It's too high percentage of a shot. Coleman hit his free throw. He'll take a seat now. The point center is 10 seconds away, barring overtime. And on the floor for Kentucky, Saul Smith, Desmond Allison, Keith Bogans, Jamal McGlore, and Tayshawn Prince. Prince and Saul Smith, the best three-point shooters they've got out there. They'll put it in Smith's hands. Here's the game. They bring him sharp for defensive ability. See, I wouldn't let him get a look at a three. Saul Smith going to push one up there. Came up short. McGlore underneath. And a 10-year boogie is off the back of Auburn. They got their W, baby. They oh. finally beat Kentucky. Look at this. They're going bananas here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Our table, you got to watch out here, Brad. Our you table ready out. to go to oh. Martin Chris Porter. Oh, you got to watch out here, baby. Cliff oh. Ellis finally off the snide. He was 0 for 8 against Kentucky. He's beaten them tonight. The biggest win of the season for Auburn, obviously. 66-63.
Dick and I are fighting for our lives, to be honest. It's unbelievable here. 25 straight wins at Bird Ames Memorial Coliseum. There's the hero of the night with a bad elbow. 22 points, 12 rebounds. Here's the last shot. Saul Smith trying to draw a foul. Came up short. McGlure missed it. Wouldn't have mattered anyway. The clock expires, and Auburn, for the first time in 10 years, has beaten the Wildcats of Kentucky. A happy moment for Cliff Ellis, and obviously for Kentucky, their six-game winning streak goes by the boards. What a great job defensively in that last sequence by Auburn. They did a phenomenal job. I'll tell you, I know Sports Center will be talking all about it, Brad. For Dick Vitale and ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nestle. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.